right, this is a 1983 F-150, regular cab, step side, two wheel drive. This truck was bought brand new in 83 by my grandfather. He won a work truck, something that was good on gas. It had an inline six originally. He took it to work one day. He worked for Gongor Bus Company in Irwin, PA. He had a toolbox, his old, what I guess craftsman at the time toolbox. He hit the brake, someone pulled out. He ended up dead in the front end of the bed. He brought it home that day and looked at my father and said, this truck is yours now. My dad did not want it at the time because he originally gave my dad a four wheel drive lifted. I think it was a C10 and uh, my dad won a woods truck. Well, my dad had no option, and this also came along with a payment. So when it was handed to my dad, my dad worked two jobs throughout high school, and right after he graduated, still worked to pay this truck off. He wasn't allowed to touch the truck. My dad wanted straight runner. He just wanted to run it uh, up the mounds, take it wherever. And that was the, that was <laughs> the whole deal. He's forced to take it, but he can't do anything yeah. to it. Okay. So <laughs> what happened was he started to source parts. He actually had a 460 big block ready to put into it, but then it came around, he found a... 69 Fairlane 500 block. The story goes that he thinks it was called like a Ridge Runner. It was like a moonshine car that had all kinds of, had stuff done to it originally, but he wasn't sure because of the heads on this. These heads are like adjustable and Ford only did that for a couple years and a lot of Ford guys will say like Ford never did that. It's supposedly a hypo motor, which my research, it came up as a J code motor, which are like far few and in between. My father paid this truck off on a Friday. Saturday morning, he got up, took the front clip off. He already had the, the drive line there. He had the 302 already built, uh, just a mild built, but he built it as a low compression motor. The low compression motor was supposed to get supercharged, which stuff going on and whatnot, it never got a supercharger. So this truck was reliable from the start and it's proven reliable throughout the years. In 85 is when the drive line went in. It went from inline six or straight six, whatever you want to call it. He put the 302 in it, put the C6 tranny out of an old van, out of an old Ford van. It had a whine when you put it in reverse. And they, they said the tranny was bad, tranny was bad. Turned out to be was tranny was fine. Him and his buddy put a shift kit in it, put all new internals, freshened it up. From there, he found a guy selling a rear end, a Ford nine rear end out of a Bronco. Brought the rear end, it was too long. The guy gave him the wrong rear end. I had to go back and get the shorter rear end in it. Once he got the drive line in, this truck started to be painted. This truck was originally a light brown and a real light cream color. Same with the interior. Him and his buddy painted in the garage. Both these colors on his truck are true Ford colors. They're not a custom color. Well, once he painted the truck, that's when he started to throw an interior gear. The original cluster on it was, it had an overdrive on it, which my dad didn't want because he took overdrive out. So he ended up finding a cluster in a junkyard and put it in this truck. So it actually has first, second drive. This truck only has three gears. From there, he drove it, drove it, drove it, drove it to car shows. Then he finally lowered it. Well, when he lowered it, he was the first one to have a lower truck in this area. Mm -hmm. No one's done it because everyone wanted to lift them sky sure, high. Right. Put the learn kit on. Then he had a problem with his front end. The tower camber. He actually had a guy have to bend his twin I-beams in the front end. And yeah. now you can't even find a guy to do that. No one wants to do it, nor can are these old fellows around to even show like a younger generation of how to do it. Once you got the twin I-beams and everything lowered, the wheel sat right the tire sat right he drove it to car shows the first couple years i mean he won awards after awards after awards because it was brand new there's nothing wrong with it it got done in 85 then up till 2000 it was stuck away it was up my grandmother's carport but it did have some moisture in it at the time i was building a chevy 1500 regular cab a footbed but it had the ls motor I was working on a car, came home from school. My tie rod broke on my beater car. I was well in it. I told my father I had all the money lined up because I just recently sold my brand new quad. And he turned around and goes, the truck's yours. And I kind of just looked at him like flabbergasted. Like, what are you talking about? He goes, the brown truck is yours. So that happened about in 2018. At the time, I had all kind of money to play with, which worked out in my favor because I had to put a lot of money in this truck. I did my own touches from the headlights, the grill, the little knickknacks like the bumper the little spikes on it I ordered wheels and tires and at the time I put slicks on it I put bias plies which was not a smart move at all by me because going through corners this truck wanted to, the, no the, the, the rear <laughs> the rear end wanted to slide on me it felt like the whole rear end was gonna kick so I mean they were good for a straight line and good for traction but besides that they were terrible for handling 
So I end up burning those off and I put Nitto NT55Rs on it, which are a great tire for this rear end. This truck handles incredible. I'm not afraid to do whatever. It had a dual exhaust coming out the back. I took that out. That no more. It had these old school naked ladies on the bumper. I end up getting rid of those because that's a 19, I guess, 80s thing. And it, I was just, I'm not Maybe about that. If you're my age, you could get away with it. But when you're 22, you can't have naked ladies on your truck. No. For an old guy, you can't. Yeah, for an old guy. So that was like my dad's thing. And I respect him, but it had to go. I had to do a little motor work, get the motor back running up to par, tune it up, spark plug wires. Never had an AC to begin with. The AC was put in this truck. It's had so much work done to it. When I acquired it, I had to put just as much work to get it back on the road and get it to 100% where I can take it out whenever I want and beat on it. Yeah. I'm not afraid about blowing this truck up. It runs flawless. It's a low compression 302, like I said. It's it's nothing quick, but I mean- It's fun it, to drive and I bet you a lot of people ask you about it. Yes, no, I've, I I've had, you know? since I. I've owned this truck probably 40, 50 people, and this is no exaggeration, in about two years of owning it and only two seasons of driving it. I've had people come up to me, roll down their windows and yell at me. I'll be rolling down the highway, roll down their windows and yell or give me a thumbs up. So it's always cool like to see yeah. everyone's interactions because you don't see a truck like this anymore. And I mean, I'm just trying to preserve it as best as I can. I still love these old trucks. There's just something about them, the way the doors shut, the way it creaks, the wood bed, the way the sound makes when you go around a corner, it just has its own little touches that you wouldn't really notice in a newer vehicle but when yeah. you get in an older vehicle you notice a lot of stuff that's different which is very unique and it's something i've always fell in love with the truck is not to be babied it's meant to be driven it's not meant to be a show queen it has its nicks it has its scratches the truck was painted in 85 the paint's cracking in the spots where it flexed i'm not worried about it i just want to run it